Tyreek Hill is the most game-breaking receiver in the NFL today. But before he even got to the league, he lost almost everything. From community college to becoming one of the fastest players the NFL has ever seen, this is the story of Tyreek Hill. Tyreek's story starts in the small town of Pearson, Georgia. He was born to two teenage parents, Derek Shaw and Anisha Sanchez, but they didn't raise him. Tyreek was instead raised by his grandparents, Herman and Virginia Hill. Despite his grandparents stepping up and taking him in, they dealt with legal issues throughout his entire childhood, constantly being in and out of jail. Regardless, Tyreek never took what they did for him for granted and ended up taking their last name because of it. When Tyreek was only three years old, his grandparents already knew he was fast. Whenever he played catch with his grandmother, she couldn't keep up. So, when he was five years old, his grandfather got him into sports, becoming his first youth football coach. It was immediately clear that Tyreek was special. None of the kids his age could catch him on the field. And over the years, every kid in town wanted to be on his grandfather's team because they knew they'd get to play with Tyreek. Once he reached high school, Hill's athletic prowess was on full display. As a freshman, he originally attended Atkinson County High School, but the school was tiny and the coaching staff had no idea how to handle a talent of his caliber. So, his grandparents, who had unwavering faith in their grandson decided to pick up and move 20 minutes up the road so Tyreek could attend the much larger Coffee High School. During his time at Coffee, Tyreek flourished as an athlete, but not so much because of football. It was his decision to join the track team his sophomore year that changed everything. Sure, he was a great running back for the football team, but by Hill's senior year, he was one of the greatest high school track athletes we've ever seen. Tyreek won states in the 100-meter, 200-meter, and long jump, and his 200-meter time of 20.14 seconds missed the high school record set over 25 five years earlier by just one hundredth of a second. Tyreek also competed in Junior Nationals and the World Junior Championships. He claimed USA Junior Outdoor Track and Field titles in the 100-meter and 200-meter races. Then, at the World Junior Championships, he placed fourth in the 100-meter and earned a bronze medal in the 200-meter, with times on par with actual Olympic sprinters. But while Tyreek was breaking records on the track, his home life wasn't getting any better. For a while, he was practically homeless. His family couldn't afford to keep the lights on, and he would stay up late, comforting his grandma while she cried her eyes out. And unfortunately, Tyreek's rocky home life was seriously affecting his grades at school. Even though Hill was getting offers from schools all over the country because of his elite speed, he couldn't meet any college's academic requirements. If he wanted to continue his athletic career, he would have to go to a community college to improve his GPA. So he enrolled at Garden City Community College in Kansas. While attending Garden City, Tyreek continued to run track and played on the Garden City Bronkbusters football team. He played just about every position for the Bronkbusters. He lined up at receiver, running back, kick returner, and even quarterback to take direct snaps. Basically, any way they could get the ball in Tyreek's hands, they would do it. During his sophomore year, he ran for 659 yards and five touchdowns, while also catching 67 passes for 532 yards and six touchdowns. But more importantly, he raised his GPA to a point where D1 schools could actually give him a look. After dominating for two years, Tyreek was ranked number three JUCO prospect in the nation. He received offers from several top schools, including Alabama, Oklahoma, Florida State, and Texas, but he ultimately committed to Oklahoma State, beginning his D1 career as a Cowboy. And, as usual, Tyreek got off to a fast start. In his first year in Stillwater, Hill became one of the most dynamic athletes in college football, serving as a jack-of-all-trades for the Cowboys. He hauled in 31 passes for 381 yards, 740 kick return yards for two touchdowns, 256 punt return yards for one touchdown, and he averaged 5.2 yards per carry, with 534 rushing yards. He ranked 11th in the nation for all-purpose yards, with a total of 1,811, and his 996 combined return yards were second in the nation. His performance earned him the Big 12 Offensive Newcomer of the Year award. And on the track, Hill was even more electric. He broke multiple OSU school records while also becoming the first Cowboy ever to garner indoor All-American honors. But just when it seemed like everything was going right for Tyreek, he found the one thing he couldn't outrun the law. In December 2014, Oklahoma State announced that they would be dismissing Hill from the football and track team after his arrest and guilty plea for domestic violence. With that on his record, Tyreek became a complete no-go for every D1 school in the country. He dealt with the issues surrounding his charges for nearly a year, and it looked like Hill's college football career was all but over. Then, he got one of the most important calls of his life. Brett Gilliland, the head coach at West Alabama, 
decided he would be the one to give Tyreek a second chance. Hill had already reached out to West Alabama after being dismissed from OSU, and Gilliland initially declined after reading the police report. But after reaching out to Tyreek's former coaches and mentors, Coach Gilliland was swayed to give him another shot. It was a chance that Hill would not let slip. Coach called me, he's like, Reek, you ready to play some football? I'm like, nah, man, I ain't want to talk right now because the school just turned me down. Right. He's like, Reek, I got the transcript. In 11 games at West Alabama, Tyreek totaled 1,403 all-purpose yards and eight touchdowns, making an impact the way he always had, on the ground, through the air, and in the return game. But were his numbers good enough for NFL teams to overlook his past? That was the question, because after one season at West Alabama, Hill declared for the NFL draft. Despite his undeniable talent, for most teams, Tyreek was considered undraftable because of his legal issues. He was projected to go undrafted by almost every major analyst, and he didn't receive an invite to the NFL Combine. But when the time came for West Alabama's Pro Day, Hill was ready to put on a show. And after he ran a 4.29 40-yard dash, his head coach was sure that 20-plus NFL teams were interested in him. But when the draft came around, it looked like Tyreek's coach was wrong. The 2016 NFL Draft started. And as the rounds went on, the analysts seemed to be right. Tyreek was going undrafted. Then, finally, with the 165th pick in the fifth round, the Kansas City Chiefs selected Tyreek Hill. The 165th pick, Kansas City Chiefs select Tyreek Hill. At the time, many members of the Chiefs' kingdom were understandably upset with the pick because of Tyreek's past, but it didn't take him long to completely change their minds. Chiefs coach Andy Reid had been known for taking in athletes with troubled pasts and giving them second chances. He did the same thing by drafting Travis Kelsey in 2013, and as the coach of the Eagles, he brought in Michael Vick in 2009. Coach Reed was confident that Tyreek was on the path to be a better man and was doing everything he could to try and make up for his past mistakes. But not even Big Red could have expected what was to come from Hill, because little did the Chiefs know they had just drafted one of the best receivers in NFL history. Tyreek started his NFL career as a return man, because he was pretty far down the depth chart as a receiver. But from the jump, it was clear his speed was game-changing. In Week 2, Hill took a kickoff to the house and reached a still-standing NFL record speed of 23.24 miles per hour. The return was called back due to a holding penalty, but that's when Tyreek put the league on notice. There was a new fastest man. This was also when he cemented his self-proclaimed nickname, Cheetah. And even without much playing time, Cheetah's speed allowed him to affect the game in so many ways, like in the Chiefs' Week 12 overtime win against the Broncos, when Hill scored a rushing, receiving, and kick return touchdown, becoming the first player since 1965 to score all three ways in a single game. Tyreek finished his rookie campaign with 61 receptions for 593 yards and six touchdowns, but was also the league's best return man and was named a Pro Bowler and First Team All-Pro as a returner, an amazing start for a fifth-round pick that had no room for error. Then, that offseason, the Chiefs made a move that was somehow better than taking a chance on Tyreek Hill. While having Alex Smith on the roster, they moved up in the 2017 draft to take another quarterback. Yeah, that guy. But we'll get back to him later. Going into his second season, Tyreek wanted to build on his ability as a receiver. Everyone now knew about his speed, but could he ever be anything more than a gadget guy? Well, his first game of the 2017 season answered that question. He went for a career-high 133 receiving yards and a touchdown against the Patriots. He would continue to establish himself as the Chiefs' number one receiver throughout the season and finish the year with a team-leading 1,183 receiving yards and seven touchdowns. He also had another great season as a punt returner being selected to his second straight Pro Bowl as a return specialist. But despite Hill taking the next step as a receiver, the Chiefs were bounced from the playoffs in their first game for the second year in a row. So it was time for a change. Alex Smith was a good quarterback, but he couldn't get the Chiefs over the hump in the playoffs. So they moved on from him and went into the 2018 season with Patrick Mahomes as their new starter. And as we all know, the Chiefs' offense exploded. With Mahomes at QB, Hill went from a solid wide receiver to one of the best receivers in the league. On his first touch of the 2018 regular season, he returned a punt for a 91-yard touchdown. Blazing speed! Tyreek Hill electrifying! Later in that same game, he caught Mahomes' first passing touchdown of the year and finished the Chiefs' season opener with 169 receiving yards and three total touchdowns. This game was the start of something beautiful. Mahomes and Cheetah's skill sets complemented each other perfectly. Pat's arm strength and ability to extend plays made Hill an impossible cover for DBs. I mean, how are you supposed to guard that kind of speed for any extended period of time? Well, you don't. And most teams found that out the hard way. Tyreek went over 
over 100 yards on six different occasions that season, including a career-high 215 receiving yards against the Rams on Monday Night Football. By the time the regular season ended, Tyreek had set career highs in every receiving category. He finished with 87 receptions for 1,479 yards and 12 touchdowns, landing him back in the Pro Bowl and on the first All-Pro team, but this time as a receiver. The Chiefs won the division for the third year in a row, but could they finally make some noise in the playoffs? Well, they did make it out of the divisional round for the first time in years, blowing past the Colts 31-13. But when they met the New England Patriots in the AFC Championship game, they fell short, as so many teams had over the years. Belichick was known for game planning to take away a team's best offensive playmaker, and that's exactly what he did to Tyreek. Cheetah only hauled in one reception for 42 yards the entire game, and the Chiefs lost 37-31 in overtime. But it was still an incredible season for Hill. And that offseason, he got paid, inking a three-year $54 million extension with the Chiefs. Securing a payday like that is huge, especially for a former fifth-round pick. But it comes with a new kind of pressure. You gotta back it up. And Tyreek's start to the 2019 season was rough. He suffered a shoulder injury in the season opener against the Jags, causing him to miss the next four games. Sometimes injuries like that can linger and derail a player's entire season, but Cheetah was different. His first game back in Week 6 against the Texans, Hill went for 80 yards and two touchdowns, picking up right where he left off. Tyreek finished the season with 58 receptions for 860 yards and seven touchdowns, and the Chiefs captured another division title. But in the playoffs, Kansas City seemed like a team of destiny. First, they overcame a 24-0 deficit against the Texans to win 51-31. Then, in the AFC Championship against the Titans, they were down 10-0 and came back to win 35-24, with the help of 67 yards and two touchdowns from Tyreek. But Cheetah saved his best performance for the Super Bowl. Matching up against the 49ers, it was the classic battle of unstoppable force versus immovable object. The Chiefs' high-powered offense versus the Niners' stifling defense. And after three quarters, the Chiefs found themselves in a familiar position, down double digits again. It was 2010 in the fourth quarter, and the Chiefs desperately needed a spark. So, on third and 15, who did Mahomes go to? Tyreek Hill. And the Chiefs never looked back. They'd go on to score 21 unanswered points to win their first Super Bowl in 50 years. Man, we did it. We did it, world mother champs, man. We did it, man. Tyreek finished the game with nine receptions for 105 yards and easily the most important play of the game. But after winning their first Super Bowl, all the Chiefs could think about was the next one. And after the 2020 season, it looked like they were going to be the NFL's newest dynasty. Tyreek returned to the first All-Pro team with 87 receptions, 1,276 yards, and a career-high 15 receiving touchdowns. And the Chiefs finished the season 14-2, securing another division title. This playoff run, KC never really looked like losing, and Tyreek was dominant. He caught eight passes for 110 yards in a 22-17 win over the Browns. Then, in the AFC Championship, he had his best playoff performance yet, with nine receptions for 172 yards against the Bills, and KC won 38-24. But this time, when the big game came around, they met an old foe. Tom Brady and his new team, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. It was a Super Bowl that the Chiefs were never really in. The Bucs' defense smothered them, sacking Mahomes three times and hitting him ten. Cruising to a 31-9 victory, Tyreek had seven receptions for 73 yards, but Kansas City failed to even score a touchdown in the game. A Super Bowl loss like that will leave a sour taste in your mouth, and Cheetah came back with a vengeance in 2021. He caught a career-high 111 receptions for 1,239 yards and nine touchdowns, and he didn't slow down in the playoffs. 57 yards and a touchdown in the wild card round against the Steelers, 11 receptions for 150 yards and a touchdown in an instant classic divisional round game against the Bills. But in the AFC Championship, despite 78 yards and a touchdown from Hill, the Chiefs blew a 21-3 lead and lost to the Bengals in overtime. At this point in Tyreek's career, he had one year left on a contract that he had simply outperformed. He wanted a new deal from the Chiefs, but it quickly became clear to both parties that it wasn't going to work. And I want to stay with Kelsey, I want to stay with Pat, I want to stay with my brother. So, in a move that shook the NFL, it was announced that the Kansas City Chiefs were trading Tyreek Hill to the Miami Dolphins in exchange for a 2022 first-round pick, a 2022 second-round pick, two fourth-round picks, and a 2023 sixth-round pick. And after the trade, Hill signed a four-year, $120 million extension, becoming the highest-paid wide receiver in NFL history. Tyreek's move to the Dolphins led to mixed reactions. Right now, 
I'm one of the best receivers, one of the highest paid. So I'm, I'm just in a real good situation. On one hand, he'd form the fastest wide receiver duo ever with Jalen Waddle. But on the other hand, his new quarterback was Tua Tagovailoa, who was good but very different from Patrick Mahomes. Tua's game was more about accuracy and quick short passes, while Cheetah was known for his ability to burn a defense over the top. So how would that pairing work out? Would Tyreek's skill set be wasted? There were plenty of doubters. But boy, were they wrong. Tyreek unlocked a part of Tua's game that we had never seen before, the F it, cheetahs down there somewhere ability. Tua's yards per pass attempt jumped from 6.8 the previous year to 8.9. But it wasn't just a one-way street with Tua. Tyreek evolved, too. The Dolphins were using him more on short yardage passes. And it turns out that getting the ball in the fastest player in the league's hands as much as possible works really well. Hill caught a career-high 119 passes for 1,710 receiving yards, shattering his previous career high. The Dolphins also made the playoffs for the first time in five years. Despite a loss to the Bills in the divisional round, something was cooking in South Beach. So, when the 2023 season rolled around, the Dolphins' hype was at an all-time high, and Tyreek had a new goal entering the year. He wanted to be the first receiver in NFL history with a 2,000 receiving yard season. And for most of the year, it looked like he was going to do it. He had 215 yards and two touchdowns against the Chargers to open the season, and after just eight games, he already had 1,000 receiving yards, becoming the fastest player ever to hit that mark. He picked up some injuries late in the year that slowed him down but still ended the year with an insane 1,799 receiving yards and 13 touchdowns. The Dolphins also had another great year, finishing the season 11-6 and, and making their second straight playoff appearance. They were bounced out in the wildcard round by the eventual champion Chiefs, but at no fault of Hill, who had 62 yards and a touchdown in the game. The evolution of Tyreek Hill's game is truly special. Most elite speedsters have limited roles as returners and deep ball specialists, but Hill broke down every box he was put in, becoming one of the greatest receivers this game has ever seen. He didn't get his 2,000 receiving yards last year, but if anyone can do it, it will be Cheetah. Thanks for watching. Be sure to subscribe and check out some of our other videos on the screen now.